Okay, so uh, we're gonna we are gonna start at one. Um, thank you all for coming into the room. I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about my practice, um, which is using essential oils as part of daily life. Uh, just a couple of um, housekeeping things. I'm going to show you run through a presentation. Um, please feel free to put as many questions as you have in the chat. Um, I have someone, Reginald Marcellus is gracious enough and he's gonna be helping me manage the questions because uh, it looks like we're getting a lot of people in this room. So this is, this is good. So if you um, have a pressing question, please just raise your hand because um, it might be in the, uh, in the presentation, it might not, but I don't want you to wait. So if, you, if it's something that you gotta ask, feel free just to raise your hand. This is a really flexible space. We're just gonna have a really good time and talk about all the uh, good things around essential oils, all right? So uh, I'm gonna give it a couple more seconds because we got more people entering the space and then we will get into it. Uh, I have a question. Um, is there somewhere we're supposed to uh, put our names at? We're oh, supposed to... Hey, Sandra. <laughs> hey, you missy. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what that they is. They said something about signing in um, because I see uh, Caitlin Moore has her full name. Mine's only just oh. has Greer SD. So, so, you need to, so you have to change your name. So go hover over your name, change it to your full name, and they're going to take it from the um, registration. They'll take it from here. Gotcha. They'll, they'll get a uh, copy of who was in here. So how do I do that? I'm, I'm hovering over my name. If you go, go to participants. Okay. And then if you right click on your name, you should have three dots. And then you can say rename and it says rename. No, mine's not working. Okay. Wait. Uh, well, you know what? I, I may okay. actually, let me see if I can. If, oh, yeah. I see it. I see where it says rename. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Sure Foreman. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started so that we can respect the time. And because I know that people um, will have questions. It looks like there are more people in the waiting room, Reginald. Yes. So Sandra, I actually just went ahead and renamed, um, went ahead and renamed your profile, but th that is a good point. So for all attendees, so that we're able to properly take role and, and capture your attendance, if you could just go to the participants uh, portion of the Zoom call, um, ho hover over your name, click more and rename yourself to your first and last name in case that that's not what's appearing already. Please and thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, but how do I get back to everyone? <laughs> <laughs> I only see myself. Oh, okay, it's probably the way you have your view set up. Just click on close. Do you see us now? No. Okay. If everyone goes to the far right hand corner, you'll see view. You just want to click side by side speaker view. And I'm going to go ahead and mute all participants so we can go ahead and get started. Okay. So um, welcome, everyone. My name is Rissy Kadokide. Um, you can call me Rissy uh, for the purposes of this, uh, this little workshop here. And someone muted you. Sorry, Professor. Oh, wait. Uh, Come yeah, on, Reginald. When I, when I hit mute all, I, I muted everyone. Sorry about that. Nope. <laughs> this is so murky retrograde. I love it. Okay, so um, I've been using essential oils for like 20 plus years and uh, in the space of COVID and having to stay home and having to teach from home, it has become a big part of how I get down. Um, right behind me is, I don't know if you all can see this, but um, my, my diffuser, this is where I, this is my teaching room. So my diffuser is going. I will be talking a little bit about that and some other things. So just by, um, maybe just by raising your hand, how many people are familiar or use or have used essential oils before? Okay, got a couple folks. All right, okay, great. Um, it's helpful to know like who's in the room. Um, all right, so we're gonna get into it three more. Oh, okay, good, a number, a number of you are familiar. Thank you for letting me know that. All right, so. Essential oils are essentially um, concentrated plant extracts 
that retain their smell and essence. And so when we think about essential oils and particularly for this workshop, what I'm specifically talking about are the one plant essential oil. Um, you might see them in the store in sort of one ounce bottles. Uh, this should not be confused with fragrance oils. And fragrance oils are usually man-made compounds that mimic a scent. So, um, you know, coconut oil doesn't actually smell the way we think coconut smell. <laughs> it's really interesting. And so when we think about essential oils, we're talking about plant matter. Uh, usually steam distillation is how uh, that, that oil is pulled. And depending on how, um, how widely available the plant is and how much it takes to produce the oil, that will determine the price. So for example, rose oil is extremely expensive because of how much it takes to produce one ounce of rose oil. It takes, I think almost, you know, I wanna say the last time I checked about 20 to 30 pounds of roses to actually produce um, an ounce to two ounces of rose oil. So something like eucalyptus or rosemary or peppermint where they grow in all sorts of places, it's easy to access. Those oils are really easy. They, you can get them off the plant by just rubbing them they tend to be cheaper. So when we think about essential oils, we're thinking about plants. Um, and today what I'm gonna do is take you through six of my favorite sort of easy go-to just because you can run to the store and get them. In some cases, if you are, you know, if you have essential oils, you might already have them in your house. And then as I take you through those properties, we'll also talk about measurements. We'll also talk about um, different ways to use it. And I have a little demonstration plan. All right, so. And for those that are just entering the space, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you could uh, do me a favor, if you have questions that are pressing, go ahead and raise your hand. If not, put them in the chat. And then what we'll do is, oh, I'm just gonna jump in here. What we'll do is we will, um, we will, uh, I'll answer them as 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 we're as we're done. All right. So the first way to think about essential oils is simply through inhalation. You can take. I don't know why it's doing that. Sorry, it's like my, it has a mind of its own. Okay, all right, so what you get for trying to put cute bells and whistles in things. All right, uh, let's see. So you can do something as simple as um, open up the bottle. You can inhale deeply. And in doing that, what happens is that you enter into sort of a, a space depending on the oil. One of my favorite things to do is just to take a drop of the oil. And especially if I'm just kind of, you know, stressed out over grading or emails or whatever, put a drop in my hand. And then depending on the oil, like this is patchouli, I can rub it and do a deep inhale. Patchouli has a very grounding effect. Um, things like that are citrusy tend to, you know, give you sort of a more effusive, joyful um, effect. So that's one way that you can do it. So you can inhale that way. Diffusion is another way. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to disperse oil into the space. Uh, we are now dealing with a virus that deals with, that affects the respiratory system. And so uh, I have been doing a lot of eucalyptus and rosemary at home because those are great for um, keeping the sort of the bronchial passages, you know, nice and open. They also have really cleansing antifungal, antibacterial properties. So any essential oil that has any of those properties you can do two or three drops into your diffuser and they're all kinds. So we have something like this, which is, you know, if you go to a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls or Ross, a Target, diffusers are so mainstream and widely available now. They're very cheap. They're not hard to find. You can also find, excuse me, ones that travel. So if you are like me into all kinds of stuff, you have one for your car. So I have one for my car, plugs into the, um, the cigarette lighter or the nine volt, you know, uh, space. And usually there's a pad or it might have a receptacle for a little bit of water and it's generated and the ascent is generated that way. And there are also ones that are, I've used these before. They're cute. Um, they're not like diffusers, but you know, for close contact, these are USB. Uh, they have a little uh, essential oil pad. You put your essential oil in and the heat from the USB drive actually puts the scent out there. So diffusion is a great way to kind of change the energy of the room. Um, cold air diffusion like these up here are considered to be um, better from a medicinal health perspective because they actually encase the oil in cold water droplets. So the very small droplets and that helps uh, the oil stay in the air a little bit longer. So for a lot of folks, the cold air is the way to go simply because it allows um, 
it allows for the room to, to be saturated with the oil as you need. So like I said, right now, eucalyptus, which is one of the ones we'll be talking about, is one of my favorites for um, this season, especially with all of the cold and flu stuff coming around. All right, another way to think through um, essential oil of wellness is topical. So you can add essential oils to carrier oils such as sweet almond or jojoba. Um, and scented lotion is one of my other favorite ways. I'm gonna show you how to make a bath salt uh, as part of our little demonstration. And those are fun ways that you can absorb the properties of the oil into your skin. Your largest organ is your skin. So uh, using essential oils in that way can be really beneficial. You can also make you know, concentrated uh, massage oils if you running or working out a lot right now, a lot of us are doing that and you're sore, there are certain blends that are really good for sore muscles. So carrier oils is a great way to, um, to disperse and diffuse because some of these are concentrated oils that you're dealing with and sometimes they can be very strong on their own. So we can use carrier oils to help kind of disperse the, the effect and it's actually safer for you to, to use um, carrier oils when we're talking about large amounts of essential oil. <clears throat> As far as internal use, because I get this question a lot, Young Living is a company that I've used for quite some time. They claim to be therapeutic grade. I have ingested, I don't know why it does that. I have ingested um, essential oils before, but what I will say is that if it does not say for internal use on the actual um, label, do not use it. And I will also say that unless you can eat the plant, I wouldn't necessarily ingest the oil. So I, have no problem ingesting peppermint oil just because I like the feeling and the sensation of that cooling, but I wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, I might be a little careful about maybe ingesting a patchouli oil. So what I would say is refer to the label. Therapeutic grade suggests is often, you know, what you would look for in something ingestible, but if it does not say for internal use, I would just, you know, keep it to, to the topical diffusion space. All right, looks like we have. <clears throat> Some questions. All right, so uh, Ed says, is there a different effect from diffusion use and candle use? What are the benefits? Oh, that's a great question. So um, candle use, you know, heat is, you know, traditionally one of the first ways that I was in, engaging in essential oils was using through a heat diffuser. And it, what it would do is it would definitely put the aroma into the room. So you would feel some of the, the effects you get from just smelling a particular scent. But what I have found is that cold air diffusion from a therapeutic space, I feel is cleaner and it actually, um, you get more of the medicinal benefits. Uh, the candle, eh, it's not, I don't think you're getting as much of the benefits, you're getting the aroma. And for some people that aroma smell is really helpful, but as far as you really benefiting from what a eucalyptus oil can do, um, diffusion is probably uh, better if you're using it for therapeutic purposes. Um, you can also think through, um, the different, you know, that's the difference between smelling eucalyptus versus, you know, getting a carrier oil and rubbing it on your chest if you had a cold. So the candles are nice, but I don't necessarily think that um, you're getting as much of a therapeutic benefit. Uh, Kathy asks, what is the percentage of mixture between essential oils and carrier oils? I'm going to answer that question for you, Kathy, as soon as we get to the, to the slides. Um, Annie, hey, Annie, what are your thoughts on more mainstream oils like doTERRA trash? Oh, you're welcome, Ed. Uh, I, so, I, doTERRA for me is not, I've tried it. I, I feel like they're really overpriced and I don't necessarily feel like the quality. I know that they have great packaging and great branding and they sell things in a way that people feel like, oh, I'm doing it. Um, I think everyone has to figure out their own way. There are people who think Young Living uh, is trash, <laughs> you know, and I'm a fan of Young Living. So what I would say is if you're just starting out, stick to essential oils that are, you know, things that you recognize. And what I do is if I find it in the bin at TJ Maxx, I would just use it for diffusion. But if I go to like a Whole Foods or a Yes or a Mom's or any sort of natural food store and I pay a little bit more money, that's what I'm using in my skincare, um, you know, on my, um, in, from topically. So I think doTERRA, it has great branding. I personally have not been a fan. Um, Anna asks, how often can you use it? When is the best time to use it? It actually depends on what you're using. So, there isn't anything that I would say from a diffusion standpoint that you shouldn't use every day. If, it, if you know, burning, if uh, diffusing lemon and, and grapefruit oil makes you happy and gets you to the day, then you should do it. Uh, but there isn't anything, as long as, especially for topical, as long as you're using carrier oils, 
you're fine. What I would say is citrus oils tend to be um, photosensitive. So be very careful if you're using a lemon or grapefruit and then going out into the sun immediately after, because in some cases it can burn your skin. So you want to be careful about that. Um, and I would also just test things out. Like I learned the hard way, I'm allergic to lemon oil. I can eat lemons, but if I put the oil in my bath water, I'm breaking out, it's a mess. So you use the things that work for you as often as you need. Um, so Lynn says, I was at the market recently. The owner of the shop uses lemon essential oil in her hand sanitizer, I loved it. Oh, I love that. Lemon is fantastic, it's antibacterial. Um, you know, if you know like people who are gourmet chefs, they use lemon to clean that cutting board. So I love lemon. Um, orange oil is also a great uh, degreaser. So if you wanted to create your own little spray with some orange oil to clean off your stoves or your countertops, also really good. So yes, I actually have a lemon cleanser right now that is just essential oil, lemon, and some alcohol. So I think it's fantastic as a sanitizer as well. All right, let's see, just make sure. <clears throat> okay, keep asking those questions, I'm loving it. All right, so rosemary. Um, rosemary is one of my favorites just because I love the smell of rosemary. But did you know that rosemary is great for hair loss, joint inflammation, and increased circulation? So um, we eat it all the time in the dry form and the fresh form, and that's great. But as an essential oil, it can be really helpful. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a little hair oil mixture as one of the demonstrations that I use with olive oil as a carrier oil that I really like. It's also, um, if you're having thinning issues, if you're having stress spot issues, uh, you know, rubbing a little rosemary oil every night in that spot really help. Um, it also is, can be really helpful if you do it in um, tandem with sage. To help with dandruff, like if you're experiencing like um, if you're perspiring more than you would like to, um, sage can also be helpful. So you can mix that in with the rosemary and that's a great hair oil. Okay, Alicia loves it. All right, I love it. <laughs> Ed asks, what is good to assist with relieving chest congestion? I'm a big fan of eucalyptus. I'm a big fan of thyme. Um, and I'm okay, so I probably should have said this at the beginning. I'm also an herbalist. And so um, for congestion, if it's a uh, if it's a wet cough, you want things that are going to sort of dry things out. And so there's actually a couple of herbs that would be good just to dry that are not essential oils that would dry that out. But if we're talking about just you got phlegm and all this other stuff just building up, and you just kind of want to leave it and you want to breathe a little bit better, if you take a little eucalyptus oil, a um, little uh, thyme, rub that together in a little. Um, I like olive oil, and I also like grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil is really thin, so that helps kind of, you know, get there a little faster. Rub it all over your chest and then cover up. It can be really helpful. Um, you can also, if, you, if you're up for it, get a big old pot, old school, boil the water, throw some essential oil of eucalyptus and thyme in there, get a towel, cover your entire, you know, yourself and your pot together and put a blanket on top of that and just, you know, do like a breathing treatment for like five to 10 minutes or as long as you can stand it. And that will also help relieve congestion. So let me know how that works, Ed. That's one of my favorite go-tos. All right, so um, oil number two is peppermint. Um, peppermint is great uh, as uh, energy aid. It's also great for digestion. I like to throw that also in my hair oils because it's cooling. And sometimes when your head is just hot from all the thinking and all that, energetically, it calms you down. Um, if you're having issues with digestion, um, you know, just eating peppermint leaves can be really helpful, but I like it in diffusers. I also like it as part of like, um, if I'm really tired and I'm just, you know, I haven't slept well, I'll throw that in my salt uh, scrub and it gives you a nice boost. And anyone who's ever used Dr. Bronner's peppermint Castile soap already knows that peppermint has a really great sort of effect. And when you're dealing in particular with, um, yes, it depends. Um, for headaches, it's not my first go-to, Deontay. I actually like um, whole, uh, oil of, essential oil of basil is actually, I find really good for headaches. Just rub it on the side and we go from there. Fever grass for what specifically, Antonia? In general, or it's an herb that I would probably use in a blend. It's not something I would use for as an essential oil in general. Um, so I don't work with it a lot. I've used it in blends to help with circulation. I've used it in blends to help, um, what else have I used it for? I've seen it in circulation blends and I've also, I feel like I've seen it in high blood pressure blends, but I don't, it's not one of my go-to, go-to herbs. I'd have to do a little bit more research, but thanks for that question. Um, so with peppermint oil, think also because of its cooling effect. Oh, good. I'd love to know more about how you like that. So 
maybe we could talk offline because I'd love to see what you've been using that for, um, the fever grass. Um, so if you are dealing with fevers, particularly of small children, um, I throw a little peppermint oil in the bathtub and give them a bath with it because it is cooling. So if you're experiencing fevers and you're trying to help sort of bring things down, a little bit of peppermint oil in the bath could be really helpful as well. Keep the questions coming. I am loving all of this. All right, so number three, orange. It's orange, it's, it's bright, it's, it feels good. It's, it's all of the things, it's fantastic. It's also great for, in addition to degreasing your stove, it's also great for skin conditions. So if you're having issues with acne, dull complexion, or if you just want to kind of change the mood, maybe you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed and you just need a minute, a little bit of orange oil in the diffuser in about a minute, like it, it really does help just shift anything, unless you absolutely hate the smell of oranges. Um, I think it's one of my, it's one of my fun ones to go to. It's also very bright. I use that um, oftentimes with um, a really nice trick is a little bit of orange and a little bit of patchouli mixed together in your hands and then rub the soles of your feet and it actually feels like you're sort of grounded and connected. So if you're feeling sort of up in the air and like sort of airy loosey goosey, it can be a really helpful, quick and dirty way to kind of anchor yourself back down. Um, what can assist with survival? Okay, uh, Ed, we're gonna talk sep separately because I got stuff for that. Um, I'm sorry if I'm telling everybody's business because I'm not paying attention to the private. Um, <laughs> Nikki says, do you just put the oils? Yes, so the question is, do you just put straight oil directly into the bath? Yes, because you are dealing with large amounts of water in the bath water, two or three drops of essential oil in the bath water is, the water is the carrier. So that's absolutely fine. Um, if you want to mix in, if you want to mix it into a sea salt or an Epsom salt, that's also fine. Um, research using peppermint oil to help with bladder distension. I, okay, so peppermint oil in small doses in bath situations is fine for babies. If you want to give um, what I usually say for children in terms of herbs and tea, I always make the tea at a full strength and then cut it in half and then uh, dilute it with water. Um, just so that, you know, because certain herbs can be, depending on how old the baby is, can be um, a little, it can be a little yeah, too much. Peanut butter and jelly, Sam. Are you going but, Okay, somebody mm -hmm. mute because you are talking about peanut butter and jelly. Uh, Might want to mute. I have to go tonight. I got to do this class. Oh, okay. Oh, hello? So, uh, I think, okay, I think we found them. Okay. So when you're thinking about um, children, my general rule of thumb is if the herb can be used in the bath, that's probably what I do first, just because kids are a little bit more sensitive. And I'm talking like three and, you know, three to four years and below, you can put the oil directly in the water. Like if you're dealing with a child with a fever, that could work. As far as um, bladder distension, I have not heard of peppermint for that. Um, when we're dealing with bladder issues, bladder rack, which is a form of seaweed, is often some of one of the things that I go to. And uber ursi can be really helpful with bladder issues. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Jennifer. But I can also talk to you offline. Antonia, where can I buy authentic oils? So essential oils vary in price and range. Um, and what you'll find is that natural, like I tend to go to natural food stores initially to buy oils just because they usually have testers. So I can play around, sniff and smell, kind of see for myself what things are. And if I find something that I really like and I trust, then I can order it online. Um, Mom's has a really great, um, Mom's My Organic Market has a really great, uh, or Acacia is like a really well-known mainstream, easy breezy essential oil line that is in Whole Foods, is in Mom's, it's in Yes, so you can go there. Um, what you might find is that a lot of those stores might create their own essential oil blend or brand and sell it for cheaper. That is also fine. I think the rule of thumb for me basically is if it is um, an herb like rosemary, peppermint, those herbs in general are so easy to extract oil from that a cheap version, you're, you know, you're not, yes, you could pay $50 for, you know, some some peppermint oil that was maybe peppermint grows on the side of a mountain, you know, somewhere in Siberia. But what you're getting in that, you know, three or four dollar or five dollar bottle at the local market is 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 going to do what you need it to do. Um, what you do though is I think you always go first and try to see if you can experience the oils in person. I don't necessarily like to buy essential oils online unless I am familiar with the company. And even then, what I would suggest is only buy directly from the company's website 
don't necessarily buy from Amazon because you may not, you, you don't know what you're getting. Um, and they range. So if you're doing somebody's sort of store-bought brand, it's going to be generic. It's a bit cheaper and things can go up from there. But Oracacia is kind of my favorite thing to recommend because it's mid-level priced. Um, they have a whole variety of single essential oils and they have really good blends that are essential oil. What you want to pay attention to is the label. Remember, fragrance oils are man-made compounds. So somebody may, it may smell pretty, but it may not have enough essential components in it to actually be therapeutic. So you want to make sure that you are getting essential oils because you're getting the smell, but you're also getting the therapeutics of it. All right, so let me see here. Um, so Antonio, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, Marcy says, my daughter finds peppermint oil tea. Yeah, that makes sense. It, that would make sense because digestion um, is really a great way. I mean, peppermint's a great thing to do with for digestion. Uh, so Robin asked, the peppermint oil can be added with the carry oil and rubbed around the belly button. Oh, I like that. Okay, that's a great idea. Uh, at least, thank you. Did it, okay, thanks, Robin. Yes, you can. Jennifer asks, can you mix different essential oils together? Yes, you can. Um, I, I deal with essential oils energetically. Uh, so the smell is not the first thing that I'm looking for. If you are looking for things from a scent perspective, um, you just want to take it easy and kind of get used to what it is that you're interested in. I would start with maybe two and go from there. Um, like when we, when I do orange and patchouli together, I usually do like, if I do five drops of the patchouli, I'll probably do like eight drops of the orange because patchouli is a little heavier and darker. So it's a lot stronger and you know, the orange is a little lighter. So sometimes even kind of getting a sense of the thickness of a liquid and how strong it naturally is can determine how much you need. But it's really, um, there are some really great books that have like different recipes that you can try. And what I always say to people is like, Pinterest is your friend. There are all these really great recipes um, on Pinterest. If you put in essential oil recipes, everything comes up and you just play around with it. See what you respond to. But yes, you can certainly mix things. Um, Odina loves our acacia. Hey, Odina. Um, yep, you can get it organic if that's what you prefer. Absolutely. All right, I think we got most of the questions. Okay, so back to this. So orange, a um, lot of fun. It's great for skin conditions. If you're feeling a little dull, you are having issues with acne. Um, if you add a little essential oil of orange to like your, you know, a non-scented face wash, that's a great way to deliver it um, onto your face. I have a citrus uh, orange face uh, facial cleanser that I absolutely love. Um, you can also, like I said, it's really great for cleaning. So if you just want to have your kitchen smell like orange, or if you have grease stains in places that you know you want to try to clean, orange can be really helpful in that way. Uh, let's check the. <clears throat> okay, Robin. Robin says peppermint helps with hot flashes. Go for it. Cooling makes sense. Sandra can um, can oil help clear the air smoke? I think so. But what I find is that what you want are more of the like, um, so if I was trying to clear smoke, I would probably start with diffusing like a tea tree and a eucalyptus to kind of just, cause you don't want things that are perfumey. You really want things that are gonna sort of clear all that, that, that energy out. So I would start with a lot of the plant instead of the flowers, the plant-based things. So try eucalyptus and try some tea tree oil to start. Um, you can also, Another way to, to play around with essential oils, get look, a little spray bottle, add distilled water. I prefer distilled water because you have less issues with bacteria. If you can find some um, vitamin E oil, I throw a little bit in there too, because it's a natural preservative. And then, and I'll show you the, the breakdown of the uh, measurements. Uh, put in your essential oil of, of eucalyptus and tea tree, and you can just spray the room. So you can make your own sprays from it too. So you don't have to diffuse it. If that's taking too long to get to the point, you can also create a spray. Um, <laughs> there's a whole, Hot flash conversation. I'm so excited. Um, Cameron says, any recommendations for blending oils to create great atmospheres for date nights and getaways? All right, Cameron. Um, so it depends on what you're into. I'm a big fan of cedar and patchoulis and like wood scents because um, they're just very masculine scents. But then I like to play around by adding things like I did a patchouli and violet mix once and it was way too much fun. Um, that's, that's always good. Um, you, you can find fragrance oils that are, you know, that are fine for the skin that aren't necessarily just essential that mimic, you know, there's one that's a really fun one that I found that's like honey. And so if you mix that with a little patchouli, that could be a lot of fun. You can also think through like, what are some of the things 
are you and your partner like in terms of scents that you actually like like low key vanilla extract vanilla has this this effect on people it increases the femorones and so um you can play around with vanilla as part of the base of something so what i would suggest is um first decide what kind of scents you like and then once you're clear on the types of scents you like um, then you start finding, you know, start, you start small, like don't spend a lot of money because essential oils are addictive. You should see my closet. And so you want to make sure that you have figured out the brands you like and things of that nature. But um, you can play around with rose oils that are fragrance oils and not necessarily essential oils to, to save money. Um, lavenders are really nice. Um, Passion flower is an herb that I really like. It's really good for calming the system and it has a very sweet smell in essential oil form. Um, there are things that are um, sort of woodsy, so like pine, wintergreen, those kinds of things, depending on the atmosphere you want to create, can be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Y'all are having a ball in here. Okay, so, oh, yes. Um, I used to work at Smile, Dolores. Uh, so yes, I do like Smile's herb. Uh, my, I do like Smile Herbs um, oils. Um, I haven't been in a while in terms of what oils they do have. But I actually used to use a lot of their um, store their store brand essential oils and they were just fine. I used them for all kinds of things. Oops. Um, type of recommendation. Okay. Yes, light floors and citrus seam. Yeah, those are all really nice. And what you can do if you want to ground it, you can add sort of a wood a wood type of scent. So play around with cedar. Cedar works really well with the florals. It's it's quite nice. And um you know, think through, you know, like again, what your preferences are. Phyllis says tea tree gets rid of skin tags and pimples. I love tea tree oil. It is everybody's friend. It should be in your, it should be in everyone's sort of first aid toolkit because it's great for skin tags and pimples. It's also antifungal. So if you get infections or if you stub your toe and it, you know, it turns black because there's like blood pooling, it can help, you know, with the nail and all of that. Um, if you have, you know, um, if you, if you are sort of prone to like, if you're having issues because you're perspiring too much and you, you know, you can take a little tea tree oil and like actually throw it in your washer. So I used to, you know, eucalyptus lavender, I would actually put some of those essential oils in the, in the wash cycle as just part of the wash cycle. So if you're having issues just with, you know, just what we're dealing with and the stress of that, tea tree oil is really good if you're having infections, if you're having issues with your skin breaking out, um, you don't want to put it on open wounds but it can be helpful if you are having like a bad reaction. Uh, lavender is fantastic for burns and it's also hemolytic. So I've actually used it on minor cuts. So when I've gotten a small cut somewhere, it burns a little, I'll put a little lavender oil on it and that will seal it up right away. And it's great for burns because you don't get the, um, you scar less. So it helps reduce the, the, the appearance of scarring. Um, how long do oils retain effectiveness? This was in the presentation, but I'll go ahead and tell you now, Marcy. So, I say use your oils. So don't keep oils just to be keeping oils. But you have about a year and a year and a half before you start to, you know, before they're like, you need to get rid of them. Oils, really good essential oils by nature oxidize over time. So every time you open that bottle and you sort of expose it to the air, you're oxidizing, which means you're kind of losing some of the effectiveness of it. So what I usually say is if you've had it for at least a year, if you can still smell it, then what I usually do is I'm, I those oils I just put in my bath salts and just take a bath with it, um, or I put it in the diffuser. Um, you know, it's fine. You may not it may it won't be as strong, so I just do it in you know something as disposable as a diffuser or a bath. But if I'm using it for like my massage oils or if I'm using it for like a lotion, then you want them to be a little fresher. So what I would say is you got about a year, year and a half tops before like all the goodness is gone. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, smiles been open since the 70s. Um, any suggestions on a good diffuser to buy? So because things have become so mainstream and easy and accessible, I would say go with whatever you whatever whatever you like aesthetically. I have had I have about five diffusers throughout the house. I bought one for my dad when COVID started because he has asthma, so I make him diffuse eucalyptus every day. Um, I don't have a brand that I absolutely love, love, love. But what I have done is I go to the TJ Maxx whenever I need a diffuser, I keep my receipt. When you plug in your diffuser, when it gets going, if you're not getting, depending on, depending on your, um, the setting, you want a really steady stream of, of sort of the, the, the smoke coming out. And if it's, if it's sputtering, if it gets too hot too quickly, take it back. But 
most of them are okay. Like you're spending maybe 10 to 15 bucks. I would try it out for a week, keep the receipt. That's what I do. And as long as it's active, I don't worry about it. But um, I prefer to buy my diffusers, like me go to the store, open the box, take a look at it, as opposed to ordering it online, just because I'm just that way. But yeah, I would, you know, I don't, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on, there's some really expensive diffusers that do all of these amazing things. They're like, you know, initially they were like $100, $150 for a, a cold air diffuser. And now they're like 12, 15 bucks, depending on where you get it. So you aren't necessarily getting the top of the line, but for what you're trying to do, a 10 to $15 diffuser is absolutely fine. Um, is tea tree good for dandruff? Yes. And so is sage. So um, if you're having issues with dandruff, um, depending on your hair type, um, certain people need oil, other people too much oil is not good for their hair. So you can do a hot oil treatment with a little rosemary, a little tea tree, a little sage, and then wash it out, you'll be straight. So tea tree is fantastic for that. And I would just throw a little rosemary in there just because, you know, it's, it's good for the hair. And sage is actually really good for dandruff. Um, do you use a carrier oil when you diffuse eucalyptus? Um, no. So that's a great question. In your diffuser, if you're going to diffuse using a diffuser, you're just going to put water in and then put two to three drops of the essential oil in, and that's what you do. Um, if you are using the oil topically, then that's where the carrier oil is, is going to be helpful. But for the actual diffuser itself, it's just put water in the receptacle, two or three drops. I had a friend who was putting like half a bottle of essential oil. She's like, it's so expensive. I was like, well, how much oil are you using? So you really only need two or three drops for you know your average diffuser and it'll last you for a while. All right, cool beans. Um, let me make sure I've got, okay. So moving on. So we got orange, um, eucalyptus. <laughs> you know, I've been talking about it. It's my favorite. It's mucus clearing, helps with easy breathing. Um, I actually go to Trader Joe's once a month, buy a bunch of it and bunch it together and hang it in my shower. Um, there are a lot of, um, I think, and the Dutch have a whole spa culture around eucalyptus. And so if you leave it in the shower, not that it gets wet, but so that the steam from the shower, it will activate the leaves and the oil will just be all over the place. It's a fantastic experience on a regular basis. And um, because it's so easy to get the oil, like you could rub a leaf, eucalyptus leaf and get the oil. It's, it's such an easy way to disperse oil. It's a fun way to, to work with eucalyptus, but you can also put it in your diffusers you can make a chest rub if you want um, by adding eucalyptus to a carrier oil, or even if there's like um, a salve, like a shea butter or um, <clears throat> a beeswax that you might wanna use on your skin. It's a great way to kind of clear all that congestion up and make things a little bit easier. It's fantastic for the kids, you know, so if you don't wanna give them something that's more pharmaceutical, you have eucalyptus oil there. But with, you know, as always with the kids, just because they might be a little sensitive, make sure that you are, um, using something like a carrier oil or, or you know, something that diffuses it. <clears throat> okay, somebody asked questions and, oh, my bad. Going back. All right, so questions. Um, eucalyptus is great for migraines as well. Okay, so people like that. Carrier oil. So when I say a carrier oil, we are talking about oils that can be used to help disperse the, the essential oil. And I'm gonna show you a list of oils that are available that you can use. But this way, you're not taking in the essential oil in its concentrated form. So when you see essential oils, um, this is a concentrated. So this is not diffused. It doesn't have a carrier oil in it. It's all that plant oil. And so you wanna make sure you wanna be careful um, because they're so strong, you don't need a lot of it. A lot of it goes a long way. So you can use a carrier oil to help disperse it. It saves you on money, and in a lot of cases, it um, it's just better for you because in their fully concentrated form, one or two drops is really all you need. But if you wanted to use a lotion or create some sort of you know body oil, that carry oil will help you use less, but it will disperse it a little bit further. Um, if I don't have a diffuser, can I put the oil in a pot and boil it? I used to do that. Um, again, you'll get the scent. But the thing about cold air diffusers is that because of the way it releases the oil, the therapeutic properties are, are stronger. So I used to burn my oil in a little diffuser pot. It's a little tea light candle, it had a little well, you put water there and you add your oil. And so things would smell great, but the heat, it's essentially cooking the oil. <clears throat> so you are getting the benefit of the aroma, but with the cold air diffuser, because it's not actually cooking the oil, when those droplets go out into the air, 
um, you are retaining the therapeutic value a little bit more. So you can, it'll smell great, but will it have the same sort of therapeutic qualities as a diffuser? Not so much. So just, you know, something to think about. Um, you might be better off just making a spray and then just spraying it when you need it. Um, is there a reason? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think, wait, so Reginald, are we recording this? Yes, we are. It's okay. being recorded so, and it'll be shared on YouTube at a later date. Okay, cool. So we'll be able to do that. And I will, um, what I can do is I can make sure that the copy of this presentation, um, I said that it's a PDF, so I can, I'll share it with you all before we leave. And then that way you can take it with you if that helps. I was prepared. Okay. Um, oh, question about pets. So I do have a cat. <clears throat> um, eucalyptus is not good for cats. So that's the one thing in my research that I have found you have to be careful because certain essential oils, like cats are really sensitive to essential oils in the ways that dogs aren't. So um, I know eucalyptus, some of the, you know, some of the citrus oils are, are not really good for him. I do, you know, give him a bath and I have used geranium oil on him and he's been fine. But I do know that we have to, when it comes to the cat folks, you have to be careful because um, it can be toxic in their system. So um, what I have found right now are some of the citrus and some of, and definitely eucalyptus. So what I would say is, you know, diffuse it. <clears throat> if you diffuse it, it's fine. It's the actual live plant and the oil itself that we have to be careful of them ingesting, but if you diffuse it, it should be fine. <clears throat> so yeah, so diffusing is not gonna have an effect on them. It's really them actually ingesting the live plant or the, or the oil directly. So you're fine, diffuse away. Um, all right, so oil number five is the good lavender. Uh, we talked a little bit about this in the chat. Um, a lot of people associate it with relaxation and um, stress reducing, but it's also antibacterial and antifungal. It's one of my kitchen oils that I keep in the kitchen. Like if I burn myself or cut myself, that's the first thing that I reach for. I take it when I travel. Um, it's a hemolytic, so it definitely, sorry, I spelled antibacterial wrong. Um, it's a hemolytic, so it definitely helps um, if you, you know, sort of stop bleeding. So if you're having an issue, like you cut yourself again, I just got or two and It'll burn a little, but it does seal it really quickly. So don't underestimate, while it smells good for a lot of people and it's relaxing, um, it also can be really great for cleaning. Um, it's really great for putting it into the air during the day just to kind of cleanse the air. So if you aren't one of those people who, like I have, my sister loves lavender. It absolutely relaxes her. So if, you, if lavender is diffusing, it's a wrap. She's not doing anything but laying around. So for her, it's a nighttime thing. But for other folks, it doesn't have that effect. So depending on how, you know, lavender affects you, it's a really great go-to oil for a lot of things. So I wouldn't just limit it to nighttime and rest and relaxation because it's also good for like keeping the, the ickies away. And then our sixth oil is patchouli. I'm a hippie and I love patchouli. Um, <laughs> it's grounding, it's calming, it's fantastic for skin. Um, I love using it um, for skin. It just makes everything just pop a little more. And if you're having issues with acne, like you mix a little of that with orange, it's like a great little thing. There are different um, variations of patchouli depending on where you get it from. And patchouli is one of those essential oils that as it becomes more exposed, um, it gets thicker. So you really wanna make sure that when you're dealing with patchouli that you're closing things really tightly. Um, and also depending on where in the world you get it from, it can be pretty pricey. So just keep that in mind. But I know that it's associated with like Woodstock and hippies and all of that. And it, sometimes it gets a bad name for it, but a little bit of patchouli can really, really help ground you. And it's really great for skin. So like a little drop, just rubbing all over the face, you know, as part of a moisturizer situation is fantastic. I use it today. Um, so Ted asks, where can we purchase the material? So Ted, I'm assuming you mean the essential oils? And so if that's the case, um, you can go to any of the any of the natural food stores. If you go to Yes, Moms, um, Whole Foods, they all have essential oil options. Um, or Acacia, I think is in all three of them. So you can definitely, Sprouts, yep. So if you, Sprouts, Roots, any sort of natural food store, you'll be able to find it. And what I said before was um, go to the store if you can and play around with it. The thing about going to the stores is that they have testers. and Keep in mind that as people open and close and all that, it's oxidizing, but it gives you a better, it gives you a chance to sort of interact with the, um, with the oils before you actually buy them. 
And the thing is, because this is becoming more and more sort of mainstream, what is happening is a lot of these companies are creating. So like I was at mom's the other day, or Acacia has created like a four or five pack of just, you know, like, I think it's thyme, rosemary, peppermint, and it might be eucalyptus or something like that. So you now can buy things in packs. If you go to the TJ Maxx or the Marshalls, same thing. What I do though, is I do differentiate what I buy from the natural food store. Those are the things that will end up as part of my skin regimen in my bath water, all of that. Things that I buy at, you know, at the TJ Maxx and the Ross, I'm just diffusing with those. So I'm a snob, what can I say? I don't know where those things have come from. You know, with moms, I know that their buyers have, you know, a specific uh, perspective and a guarantee. So I know that I'm getting, you know, the best possible product. With, my, with, with Ross and TJ Maxx, it's, it's a coin flip, but I can at least diffuse them. So if you want to just try stuff out in the diffuser situation, I would go to the Ross, I would go to the TJ Maxx, try that first, get familiar with those scents, what you like, what you don't like. And then when you want to spend money, head over to like the Whole Foods and the moms and the, um, and the yes markets. Um, thanks, for, thanks for your knowledge. Ab well, thank you. I appreciate, you know, the questions. I could talk about this all day. Um, <laughs> so, um, so Kathy, I saw your question. Hold on real quick. Let me just make sure. Um, yes, from the lavender oil. I'm glad that you were able to do that. It does make a difference. It's really helpful. Um, lavender is really great in, in those spaces. So medicinal spaces, lavender can be really, really, um, like my sister was hospitalized a lot because she had chronic issues and we spent, yeah, they always knew when I was there because the essential oils were always popping. And so it's, it's, a, it's a nice way to kind of help people through, through their transition. Yes, great for skin. <laughs> okay. Sprouts. Um, all right. So Nia says, glut, yes, gluts. <laughs> I forgot that glut does have um, things. I'm not familiar with Mr. Brown. Um, Jennifer, I have suggestions. So can, if you can email me, you if you can send me your email privately, I will hit you up because I have some suggestions for that. Um, mosquitoes. So Ed said mosquitoes, the term mosquitoes, flies and that. So citronella oil is really good for that. Um, eucalyptus oil, though, is also. Um, they don't seem to like eucalyptus. So what I usually do is um, make a little spray uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of the summer. And I find that peppermint oils are good for gnats. I like the centronella oil for the mosquitoes. I haven't figured out how to get rid of the flies. They don't seem to respond to any of the things that I try, but like cinnamon oil is great for ants. Um, but the gnats and the, the mosquitoes, like that, that eucalyptus, that centronella, that's all gonna be really good. And what you can do, like I know some people have um, sometimes, like, I don't know, how, you know how you can do um, on your hose, you can get a little bottle and then you can like whatever you use to deliver your fertilizer, like in a liquid. Some people have, I know people who've done that with essential oils and sprayed their lawns with it. And that has been really helpful. Uh, body oils from Bed and Bath is the same. No. Um, so Antonia, anything, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. Hopefully you don't sue me. Um, Bed and bath, bed, bed, uh, bed, bath and body works, all of those things. Um, what I would say is read the label. So I was thinking bed, bath and body works, but you're talking about bed, and, okay, whatever you're talking about. What I would say is read the label. Um, a lot of those are often mimicking scents. So it may say lavender or freesia or whatever, but when you go and look at the ingredients, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in it. When we're talking essential oil, if we're talking one plant essential oil, the only thing in that bottle is that plant's oil and that's it. There's nothing else in that bottle. So what I would suggest is just go and look at the, um, at the label. Sometimes oils are, you know, they may have olive oil in them because they're meant to be sort of used for the skin. But when we're talking about essential oils, particularly for diffusing, um, you're really just dealing with the plant, that, that plant essence that's been like delivered from a steam distillation. So there should be nothing else on that label but that particular plant. So read the label and you should be fine. Wegmans has, okay, so thank you, Odina. Wegman has Arcacia as well. And sometimes they have a sale and distilled water. Hey, Hazel, which Hazel? Shout out to Wegmans. Um, lavender is great for mosquitoes and peppermint. Um, mice hate peppermint as well. So if you ever have mice issues, a little peppermint oil on some cotton ball in the areas which you found them will deter them. Lemongrass, I love it as a tea. Works wonders, okay, for the mosquitoes. I didn't know that. All right, so I have to try that next. So lemongrass is another suggestion. Um, and some people mix it with peppermint, nice. Okay, so Jennifer, I'll hit you up. Okay, I'm not sure what junk means, Dion. <laughs> um, oh, for body odor, uh, as far as, okay. So 
If you're having issues, there's a couple things. So sage is really good if you perspire a lot. So if you're having a lot of issues with perspiration, you can um, you can bathe with sage, you can make a tea out of it. And like, I know I had a friend who had really bad sweaty feet. And so we made a tea that she would drink on a regular basis that had sage in it and that helped. So you can try drinking sage on a regular basis. You can also take that oil and make it into a spray or just incorporate it into your daily bathing ritual and that will help. Um, uh, tea tree oil I also like for that as well because sometimes what you're getting from body odor is just potentially, um, without going too far into it, just clogged pores. So the tea tree oil can be really, really helpful in that regard. Um, okay, so Bed Bath Beyond and Body Works oils. Yeah, see, I haven't gone to those stores in a long time. I used to be a huge Bed Bath Beyond, like they had all my money. And then I've you know, discovered essential oils and it's been so long ever since. Um, back to base oils, I'm gonna, yes, avocado, that's on my list, olive, a coconut. Oh, we call the oils junk, gotcha. <laughs> So we're gonna talk about the carrier oils. Um, you guys are fantastic. So uh, we'd already talked about this, but if you have questions about your, just for those who are just joining, keep your oils tightly secured and store them in cool, dark places. You will don't want your oils exposed to light, direct light or otherwise, because that will help the oxidation process go faster and it will damage the oil. So try to make sure that you get your lids tight. Um, make sure that you are using your oils that you're, so you don't have things sitting until a year in or out. But yeah, have fun with it. Just make sure that you, um, <laughs> absolutely, Jennifer, um, just make sure that you, um, you're paying attention. Like I didn't close a patchouli oil right one time and it was a mess. So just make sure that you take the time and that you're, you know, that you're screwing those tops back on and, you know, no sort of see, through, don't, don't put things in front of, um, windows and things of that nature. Keep all of your oils and cupboards and you should be fine. So making your own magic. So you can incorporate essential oils in a variety of ways. Jojoba, olive, avocado, grapeseed, sweet almond, coconut, favorite oils to use. Um, there is a version of coconut oil called high fractionated coconut oil that stays liquid all the time. So the process that they use makes it that it's really, it's a thin liquid. It doesn't um, become solid. Um, so I use that sometimes, particularly for the summer. Um, avocado, uh, jojoba, and olive are my favorites for this time of year because they're heavier oils. So um, you can, you know, put your essential oil in that and make a really great therapeutic um, body oil if that's what you want to do. If you're looking for a um, massage oil, you want thinner oils. Grapeseed is a really great, um, is a really great, is really good actually for massage oils for those of you that are looking for that. And then, uh oh, I'm coming back to that in a minute. Unscented lotions, shea butters, sea salt, sugar, also ways that you can play around with the oil. And let me just check the questions. Apricot kernel, yes, thank you for that. Um, transcript of the session. So Linda, the session is being recorded and I am going to, before you all jump out, I will put a copy, a PDF copy of this presentation. I'll share it with you all in the chat, okay? So the question around, um, this is a great question, Regina. Does it matter? if the base is refined or unrefined? Oh. So um, that's a great question. Hey David, hold on one second, okay. The more refined the oil is, the, the thinner it is. And so depending on what you're using it for, that could be helpful. So I don't use a lot of olive oil in the, in the summer because it's a thicker oil. Um, but when I do mix with coconut oil, I use the refined um, coconut because it's a little thinner. It doesn't really matter. I think it's really up to you in terms of texture and how things feel to you. But I've used both. I've used, um, I've played around with sesame oil. I don't necessarily like the way that feels on the skin, although I do oil pulling with it. It's not, the, it's the scent, the sesame is just so strong that it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't, it doesn't complement any of the things that I'm mixing in it. Coconut oil I like because it's a clean scent. So you can add things to it and you really get that, that burst. Um, even the olive oil sometimes can be a little, the smell of it can be a little, eh, but I like coconut. I like avocado. Apricot kernel is great. Grapeseed is good. I mean, there's lots of different oils out there. I'm just giving you the ones that I've been using. Um, so feel free to play around with it. And what I would say is if you're experimenting, keep it to less than, you know, keep it at an ounce. So just get one ounce bottles and play around with things to see what feels good on your skin. And it also depends on how you're using it. So if you're throwing um, if you're doing a bath with some coconut oil and some essential oils and some other things, you know, whether it's refined or unrefined, you know, you're probably using it more to moisturize the skin anyway, so it's fine. It's either one should work. But if you are mixing it in an oil, 
or you're using it, you're, you're adding an oil to it, that unrefined might be a little too thick depending on the type of essential oil you're using. So I play around with things. I'm a big experimenter. Um, so you're welcome, Regina. So Regina is what you're paying for massage. So for massage, I like the sweet almond oil. I really do. I like the color, I like the texture. It's thin enough to work in the way you need to, but it's not too thin that it's drying. So like the highly fractionated coconut oil, I absolutely love in the summer, but it does dry off of my skin quickly. I noticed that. So um, sweet almond is my usual go-to um, for uh, massage oils and for just sort of the lighter oils that I want to use um, in the summer. But yeah, I think you would like that a lot. All right. People were asking about um, the, the amounts. So the, these are my suggestions based on my experimentation. And what I will say is this is just a, a this is the floor. How you go, you know, going up from here is up to you. So if we think about one ounce of carrier oil or lotion, it's usually about 10 to 20 drops of the essential oil blend. So whether you're using a single blend, a single plant, or if you're doing a mix, I would probably start with 10 to 20 drops of combined. And then if it's not strong enough, or if you want to bump it up, you can. If you're doing four ounces, I take it up to 30 to 40. If we're talking about half a cup of refined sea salt plus a carry oil, I would probably do about 10 to 20 to 30 drops. And then when we're doing the, um, the, 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 the uh, diffuser, I usually do three to four drops. Usually it's about a four ounce, um, it's a four ounce receptacle. So I do about three to four drops of that. You can do more, you can do less, it's really up to you. All right, Reginald, gotcha. Um, so when you're thinking through this is like where I start. This is where I suggest people start because it's enough of a scent to give you an idea of, of what's there, but then you can decide if you want to take it up or not. And keep in mind, depending on the lotion, I usually recommend unscented lotion. If it's sort of a shea-based or a thicker lotion, you might want to double the number of drops. But if it's like a thinner lotion, um, you know, it's a little bit more fluid, then, you know, 10 to 20 is a great place to start. But lotion, don't underestimate, you know, adding essential oils to lotion. It's actually quite nice. Um, all right, so with that in mind, thank you very much. I am going to stop sharing this and I'm gonna do a quick demonstration because I know we're running out of time, but I'd be remiss if I didn't do a demonstration. It's good to see all your faces. So this is my essential oil, okay? This is like, yes, market essential oil, I mean, olive oil, not essential oil. So this stays in my kitchen and then it makes its way around the house. So this is a one ounce dropper bottle. So I like these bottles, they're amber. So you can put them in your cupboard. Um, the, you know, the amber glass means that your oil is protected and it's great. And I love the dropper because I'm using this for my hair. So it's super, super easy um, to go from there. So what I'll do is I will fill this up right to the point where, um, this is a little too much. So right to about this point. So before the curve starts, and then I will take, um, where's my rosemary oil? All right, shucks. All right, we're gonna play with this one instead, just to show you. So most of the essential oils have some sort of dropper part in the front. So all you gotta do is hold it over. And this is patchouli, because I can't find my rosemary. So I just drop in, this is about a one ounce, this is about a one ounce thing. So because it's patchouli, it's a little thicker, I would probably just do like half of what I suggested, just because I'm playing around with this. I put in my drops and then I shake it up and we are ready to go. And so because it's got a dropper, I can just put this where I want it when I'm doing this for my hair. If you um, wanted to do a hot oil treatment, um, what you could do is put this all in a bowl, um, mix your oils, mix your, your, your olive oil and your um, rosemary and your thyme and your sage or whatever it is you're putting, mix it in a bowl. And what I do is I put that bowl, I don't put it in the microwave, I put it in some hot boiling water, like put the bowl in a bowl of hot boiling water to warm it up. And then I use a brush, get it all in the crevices, wrap my head and let it sit for about, well, for me, because I got all this hair, it's about an hour. For somebody else, maybe it's 20 minutes. And then I wash it out. Um, olive oil is fantastic for hot oil treatments because um, as you know, in ancient Greek and Roman times, it's what they use to clean. Um, clean their bodies. So it does lift the dirt off really nicely. And when you add those essential oils, it feels fantastic, but it really leaves your scalp fully, really clean. The other thing I was going to show you was a salt scrub. So this is an avocado oil that I found in my little treasure trove. 
And this is about half a cup of sea salt. I like refined sea salt because it doesn't, um, it's a lot gentler on the skin. It also inhibits hair growth. So if you are trying to keep the hairs from growing back really quickly, sea salt scrubs are fantastic. So what I do is I put enough oil in here. I don't measure, I just throw it in here. And what I do is I do it, I mix it in. And what you want is for it, depending on you, um, for some people it's grainy and that's fine. For other people, they want it to feel like a paste. And then I would add, um, take my essential oil and it depends on how I wanna feel that day. You know, this is, this is two baths for me, two showers. So this might be morning, you know, morning and, and a night shower. So I would probably do about six or seven drops, play around with it, see how I like it, see how it feels, um, mix it up. And then what you do is you cover this. I like glass bowls because that way when you're ready to wash it out, you don't have like the residue sticking like the way it will with plastic. But then you can either put this in your bath water so you can soak, or you can just, you know, put it in your hands and scrub yourself down. It leaves a really nice, um, avocado's got a really nice soft uh, feel to it afterwards. And the exfoliation of the sea salt makes it a really um, luxurious experience. So since we can't all go to the spa, the spa can come to you. So those, <laughs> <laughs> those are some really cool, fun ways to play around with things. You can have your diffuser popping every day as you are going through your Zooms. Um, thank you, Alicia. Um, um, going through your Zooms and dealing with your, your emails, you can have your things popping in and afterwards if you wanna take a nice little luxurious bath or some people aren't bath people. I love this because it's a scrub and you can just go. So I just cover this, leave it in my bathroom. Sometimes I'll make a big batch of just the oil and the salt. And then I have my, my um, sort of my base. And then if I want to, I'll just dump out what I need, put my essential oil for that and then take my shower. And then I always have this. So you can make this as just this in the olive oil or the oil that you're using and add nothing and then add the essential oil when you're ready or you can make whatever it is you wanna make and that's kind of what you're working with. Okay, you see it now? <laughs> I'm so excited. I can talk about this all day. Thank you, everyone. Do I have a spot? Not yet, Antonia, but you know, I'm ready when you are, let's make it happen. All right, so I'm going to um, put the uh, PD, okay, right, y'all are not playing. They're like, don't forget the PDF. So let me put the PDF in here and then this way you all have it. And then what I will also do is, okay. I can share a PDF with you guys, right? I can actually, I can share the file. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, let's see how we do this. So now this is where it gets tricky. All right, so, oh, that's a good point, Odina. Let me figure that part out. All right, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't think I've ever done the file. It seems easier and, um, okay. I think what I can do is, does anybody know how to share the file directly? Oh, thank you, Cameron. Oh, thank you, Dion. You guys are awesome. Um, anyone know how to share the file directly? Yes, you can email me. Uh, let me put my email here. Oh, wait, you know what? I think I figured it out. Hold on. I think I can share a link because I did this in Canva. Aha. Okay, so there you go. Technology. So here's the link to the actual file. Um, cause I did it in this thing called Canva and I sent it to Odina by accident. So I'm going to send it to everyone. <laughs> so here's the link. So somebody click on that, please. And let me know that it's working before we um, jump off. But this has, that's the whole presentation. Yeah. Canva's awesome. Canva's saving lives over here. Um, so if someone can just let me know that it worked. Thank you, Leslie. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Okay. It works great. So feel Work. free to use that. And I'm going to give you um, my email address. I know some of you I need to email directly uh, privately, so I will definitely do that. But yeah, if you have other questions, I am um, an herbalist. I do have two different lines, one that deals with ritual tools and a, a collective and I just started, um, it's five of us, we just started an ap apothecary called Strobe. So we have teas, we have crystal elixirs, we got all kinds of crazy fun stuff that you can use to get you through this 
craziness that is, um, you know, the pandemic, but um, we're here and, you know, we want to make sure that people are well. If you have more questions, thank you all. I really, I needed this little boost. I appreciate you all for coming in and like, you know, make me feel all good and stuff. So if you have more questions, feel free to email me directly. And then you can also check out our, um, the apothecary here and my sister's and I's line here. So you have both of these. Um, it's all magical, you know, amazing stuff, herbs, the whole nine. We're going to be doing some pop-ups soon. So if you want to come and check us out, we're there. But the teas are fantastic and um, they'll be really helpful. So yeah, I'm here. You need the boost. Oh, I miss you too, Marcy. Ugh, so much, so much going on. So yes, um, I got to jump off. You got to jump off. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. And if you need any more help or any more suggestions, I teach English, but I love herbs. So just hit me up. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm going to be high for the rest of the day. This was fantastic. Thanks, Rizzi. <laughs> hey, Odina. <laughs> hey, Odina. I love it. Got my cheerleaders in here. Yeah, fantastic. All right, Sandra, go get your go get your um oils. Let's get going. Have a great day. Hey, hey, email right, me because I'm gonna need help. I'm here for you. Just let me know. Just it's let me know. Amazing. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Bye everybody. See you later, Odina. I'm gonna call you later. Okay, babe. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Hey, oh. Odina. Hi, Sandra. All right, Ed. I'm gonna email you. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Ed, um, where's Ed? Oh, shucks. That was so, great. That was fun. Yeah, you were awesome. Thank you. It's um, it's making me. I mean, I've done a couple of summer blends, but it's making me think that I need to. Kenzie does diffusers, but I um, I don't diffuse a lot. And it's fun. It's making me think I need to do more of it. Try it. Tracy, how do you find that link again? You sent the link to us. Yeah, so if you go on the chat, Ted, just scroll up, and it's like a long link um, that will that you should be able to see. But I can also just really quickly put it back in if that helps. Oh, and Jeff, nice. Did you, you get it? I clicked on. I can't find it anymore. Oh, okay. Hold on, real quick. Let me wait. You clicked on the link and it didn't work, or oh, it worked fine. I still don't know how I got back there. Oh, check your tab. Up, check your tabs on your on, on your internet. Uh, check uh, on the on the um because it's probably a tab. Um, at the top. What do you mean tab? Like, are you because it should have taken you to a web page that has the presentation. Oh right, right, yeah. right. Let me see if I can find that back. That's probably where it disappeared to. Right. All right, and then let me. All right, and I'm gonna hit you up privately, and then. Oh, you're great. Great session. That was terrific. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. And you did a great job. You know your stuff really well. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Oh, I saw your listing. I said I gotta go there first, and I said I don't know. I gotta talk. I'm gonna try <laughs> blackboard and find some more black. This is much better. I'm glad I left the other sessions. <laughs> oh, I'm sad for them, but I'm happy for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> All right, I gotta find the other person I need to email. Oh, this chat was popping. Ah, okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Um, Okay, I think I found it. The HPS. Okay. Yes. W Canva. Okay. Yep, you got it. Okay. Thanks so much. You're absolutely welcome, Ted. Take care. All right. Take care. You stay safe. Thanks so you much. Okay. So 
Okay, let me continue. Yes. 